Steve Mannion here, writer and creator of this smash comic, Fearless Dawn, and you're listening to an 11 o'clock comics. <laughs> Back again. The, the room seems the same. I'm getting the same vibe from last time. What's up? Days just fly by. It's, it's whiplash. Big time. Yes. Good to see you again, though. Is it, though? Uh, it is for me. You know what? Fuck you. Oh, damn. I thought you were talking about Tony. I'm back. I'm back, oh, bitches. Shit. Yeah, we left the door open. Hey, what up? Yeah, well, I went away for a week, and or a half a week, and I wanted to come back. I hope you guys have had a good Tuesday and Wednesday. How how the FOC numbers turn out? It's great. I'm rich. Nice. <laughs> I'm rich, Biatch. It's like Karnak. <laughs> hey, everybody. I can tell your future because you are going to experience one hour of comic book delight. Because this is 11 O'Clock Comics, episode 903. And I'm the ever optimistic Vince B. Yes, you are. I like my delights in the afternoon, and I am David A. Price. Skyrocket. This, this is true, and you better watch my dragon because I'm Master Shaw. Wow. You're not Master Shaw. You're Jason Wood, everybody. And joining us again, we call him Mr. Meaty. You know him as Tony Fleece. Hey, everybody. I'm back. So there. Back in better than ever. Creator of Feral, Uncanny Valley, Local Man, all of which you can get at your local comic shops. Order them. Or where else can you get them? Cheapgraphicnovels.com, once they're collected. I was going to say, can you? Yeah, because there's there's a small catch. Cheapgraphicnovels.com has everything collected for your reading pleasure. The omnibus editions, trade paperbacks, manga, OGNs, all that stuff. At a pittance, a mere fraction of what everybody else is charging. Do the math. Go to Amazon, look for the book you want, note the price, then hop on over to Cheap Graphic Novels, and I will bet you... Dimes to dollars that you will be less at CheapGraphicNovels.com. It's awesome. And you'll get free shipping if you respond to your email confirmation for your order and say 11 o'clock comics sent me. Max will love you and give you free shipping on your next order. It's amazing. And and you'll be supporting Max's ska band Dreams with Half Past Two, his new album coming soon. Nice. You. 2024 tour coming at you. Can't wait. Think he'll come to Scranton? I doubt it. I uh, maybe. Oh, you know who's coming to Scranton? I shit you not. Guess who's coming to Scranton? You'll never, ever in a million years believe it. Body count. No, not a band. <laughs> not a band. What is one of my favorite things in the entire world? Bowling. Yes, but... Pornography. Oh, Carrot Top. Ancient Aliens is coming to Scranton. <laughs> of course. Dude, I'm are. so there. I'm so there. Why are they coming to Scranton? Why not? I think they're doing a. They're. they're I think they're doing an East Coast tour because I'm pretty sure I sent Vince the link when they were over. But, um, but they're coming to the Paramount over here. Scranton, though. Stop. Giorgio's going to be there. That's all I need to know. Uh, I see we're going to get front row tickets. Yes. I'm yes. You. I'm happy for you. Yes. So because they're going to Scranton, three minutes away, that's fine. Yeah, I just want to make the drive for an hour to come here. That's fine. David Childress is going to be there too. So. Whatever. I don't know who these people are, but it sounds cool. Yeah. Giorgio's the dude with the hair. I've never seen a single minute of this. Aliens. I'm sure you've seen the meme. Yeah. I'm not saying it was aliens, I but... I don't think I've seen the meme. Oh, yes, you okay. have. You definitely have. Because they, they, they use it for a lot of shit. Because tr- he's got his hands open, and, he, and and whatever the word is, is, is in between his hands. Doesn't yeah. ring a bell. Right, dude, okay. Oh, my God. Okay. There you go. Because Move it's on. Not a, it's not a gif. So. And I, I, should be, I should be drinking. It's not uh, Greta. I should be drinking hard <laughs> liquor, but I'm not. I'm drinking Blackberry lemonade again. Blackberry. Bro, get, get step, up. Mixing it up, man. step up. Step <laughs> up. Look who's talking, shorty. Step up. That's some saying. bubbles. I'm just saying. I got. I got some. I got some G zero. Got some. It's working. It's lemon lime. It's tight. It's, it's great. Electric. It's, it's electric. Yep. G-Zero, it is. Baby. It is electric. Get those electrolytes flowing. I got plenty of them. Do you though? Yeah, I do. 
Got a, I, in spades. Okay. Tony, what are you drinking? Oh, well, I got a... I have a glass of Dewar's. It 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 seems to be empty now, but it has a little bit in the bottom. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like there's plenty more there because I feel like if I have more, it's just gonna fuck me up. I'm gonna be ruined forever. I'm I just can't stop thinking about when Dap said doing a little East Coast touring because I just keep thinking about Boys to Men now. It's true. It's banging around in my head. It's long overdue, and now I'm feeling slamming. You know. Uh, but yeah, I'm having Dewar's. Uh, the cheap doers still, because even though in the real world time, I have already had my FOC for Feral number one. Uh, at, the, at this time of recording, I don't know if I'm rich or not. Mm. Yeah, you never skipped a beat while grooving on South Street. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of Man, ABC, BBD, the East Coast family. East Coast family. Uh, one of the um, one of the dudes in the band, I think his mother recently passed, so they were singing. They, they started one of the songs and he was having trouble getting through it. So the audience picked it up and, and it took care of the rest of it. It was, it was a pretty neat scene. Uh, I am still enjoying this bottle of Fuerza and it is from Spain. I finally found it on the label. So yeah, it's, it's, it's still a delicious red. You know, one of the worst things TikTok did to me was, they, I somehow got into this algorithm where TikTok would just feed me videos about what dickheads boys to men were. I don't know wow. If oh, really? Yeah. I have not seen any of that. Yeah, they I were, see a lot of your videos, but I don't they, see any boys to men. Dicks to everybody. Uh, I love them, of course, but for like two, like six months ago, probably TikTok was just like, I feel like we need to tell this person, Tony Fleece, that boys to men were uh, dicks to everyone. A bummer. A true bummer. Dang. Real talents, though. Beautiful voices. <laughs> they just were also dicks. Damn. I sympathize. Heart. I sympathize. But they love their mamas, though. You know that. Who doesn't? Oh, hell yeah. You nice. know I love them. So, yes, we are gathered here today to talk about comics. And what do we well, got? What's that freaking? He just told you. I'm still having the, uh, the Forza. Oh, I missed that. Okay. It's entirely. Be here now, yeah. Jason. Be here now. I was thinking about boy, he got me thinking about boys to men, and then how uh, the whole thing, and then you know. Well, my, that's the headline now. Jason's thinking about boys and men. Yeah, and then Michael <laughs> then Michael, McCa- Michael McCary had to leave the band. Well, he he left the band, and then that was like just the three of them. And it's like, are they really boys? That really boys? I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Oof. Anyway, it happens. Yeah, sure does. Love and use like food for my soul. <laughs> Speaking of food for the soul, what what, what what did you read this week that just made you love life and comics? What did you read over the weekend? What has it been? Since last we got together, what did I read? Well, I'll tell you what I picked up, gentlemen. I got uh, back to school, hack slash back to school number three. Okay, okay. Mm. Guys up on this? Yeah. Yes. I feel like it's taken forever to come out, though. It has taken forever to come out. I know that to be true. Listen, I think it's because the first issue, we got the preview of that like months in advance. And I think that. that, Well, no, I buy it off the rack. I know you do. I know you do. Uh, Let's be fair. Zoe and Tim were both uh, prominent members of Caden's Comic Card. I'm sure they've been pretty busy with shit. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I'm it's, saying, it's, I it's bet a you thing. Had you're, to do with it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I didn't consider that because mm-hmm. they don't have personal lives. Who cares? They're they're art monkeys. Just keep drawing. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm an art monkey. I you are. Uh, but this uh, back to school number three, uh, exactly what I was hoping would happen in this book. It's so crazy. Remember when I came on here and I was like, "You guys got to check out this. It's lonely at the center of the earth." Uh, this lady's doing all kinds of crazy stuff with the form. Really yes, I do remember that. Something. Yes, and then t- for like just like I was talking about last episode weeks ago when I came on here, I love it when somebody does something not just cartoony but does something genre when they do anything that seems like you wouldn't necessarily be emotional about it, but they can make you feel emotional reading it. Uh, that's what Zoe's doing with this book. Like she's doing like a genre sort of like hyperkinetic horror story with titties. And then also it, it makes you feel things at the same time. Like it, she's really, uh, she's really figured something out. 
very impressive this comic. Uh, I'm excited to see what she does next. I hope, like the indie comics, like auteur in me hopes that she only does her own thing f- from here on out. You know, like I just want to see her go and make only Zoe Thurgood books. But I think it's so crazy that when she decided, when she was like, "Well, I would like to make one thing," and it's my buddy Tim's book, Hack Slash. You know, it's so weird. Uh, it's so weird that that's the one thing she wanted to make. I hope that she has a ton of other stuff lined up, but uh, but reading through this thing, uh, I was very happy to see it. This has got to be the shortest uh, recommendation ever. But no, it's a good one. It's a good one. And and to this knows that uh, like everybody on board here is is in the bag for Zoe's books. Uh, but oh hell yeah! But it's great, you know. Like it's it's hack slash. And it's equal parts Zoe Thurgood and equal parts Hackslash. And it, and it feels um, like it just has all the, like, not all of the emotional weight that It's Lonely at the Center of the Earth had. But it brings that sort of, um, it brings that sort of feeling to it. And then it also gives you, you know, like gore and and suspense and all the stuff that Hackslash is, Hackslash is supposed to give you. Uh, it's great. This thing is great. Well, you know, as a longtime listener, that I was down with Hackslash from the very beginning. Yes. I, and, I, and I love Tim. I think Tim's great. I do. But there is an unquantified, I don't want to say unquantifiable, there, there's, there's an element that she brings to Hackslash, this miniseries, that has never been present in, in Tim's stuff. And, and I don't know, um, maybe it's someone from the outside looking in saying, well, I, here's what I can do with this. And, and maybe that's something that's definitely not Tim. So you needed another, another visionary to bring something different to the table, but it's, it's a, it's an odd, it's an odd emotional quotient to this stuff that was never ever in tim's stuff like tim tim plays to the uh, he occasionally he'll pluck on the heartstrings right because vlad and cassie you know they have a relationship and and for what it is and it works but the stuff that zoe's bringing is just very very different and i'm i i don't want to say it but hack slash is not going to be the same for me after this mm-hmm. right because she showed me that there's another wrinkle that can be added to this fabric where again, and, and I'm not downplaying Tim's creation because it is what it is and it's great. And, uh, I love this book for number one, that it actually got Jason to notice, Oh, hack slash. What's that? Is that a new book? You know, cause, <laughs> cause every time I've ever brought it up, Jason kind of, cause it's not his thing and I get it. But now that you've got somebody like Zoe on the book who comes at it from a different avenue, there's just something special about this miniseries that I hope maybe will transform Tim's work because he's got a one-shot coming out, Hack Slash one-shot that's a little bit down the road. And, I, and I'm very eager to read that to see if she, her work has had any effect on Tim's approach to his I'm characters. Very, I'm very excited for you to see what the new Hack Slash is after this because it's exciting too. Um, but, uh, but Hackslash is like 20 years old too. So like, yeah, yeah. It's at the age now where it's almost time for people to, you know, for like people to do their post Hackslash take on Hackslash, which is sort of what this is. And it's cool. And also makes me feel, uh, like a, like a grandfather. (laughs) Right. And I think Tim was really smart in his, uh, character design for Cassie because he crafted her in a way that can be easily replicated by fans of the property. Right. And it was one of the books that I, 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 one of the first books I, I, I encountered where people were actually dressing up like the characters in the book. Because, you know, even Vlad, if you're of a certain body type, you can pull off Vlad fairly easily. Right. And Cassie. And so it, it was just smart of him to, to create, to craft these characters in a way that can be easily duplicated by the people that appreciate them. So smart on Tim. And I like seeing Cassie Hack cosplay. It works for me. Uh-huh. Especially when Zoe does it. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, indeed. Yep. Awesome. I haven't read the issue yet. It's it's uh, up on my stack, but I'm going to get to it. Too sweet. It's... You're going to love it. Of course I am. Yep. Like you said, these are, these are old friends. And some new ones that... that uh, 
Zoe has created. A true doe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We could keep the image train rolling. Oh, yeah. Oh, do tell. Dap, oh. Dap, you got any image? Uh, you know what? I do. Cool. What it is. Um, well, I will. I was, well, I think, can we all, let me just see if we all read. Do, 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 do. Well, I don't know if Tony's read it, if, if he's current. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, we did. Um, so the third issue of Duke has uh, has been released and uh, still beautifully illustrated by Mr. Tom Riley, written by Josh Williamson, Jordi Belair on colors, Russ Wooten on letters, and um, it's there is it's not necessarily a a super heavy focused on on duke issue it's 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 more about his surroundings but uh he was of course uh captured in in the second issue and brought to the pit by stalker and rock and roll um and we do find out why he pretty much kind of allowed in air quotes himself to be uh caught um and for the last page of of the second issue a uh, a cellmate in the pit is none other than uh than baroness and um she runs her mouth quite a bit in this issue uh but what was really interesting uh was that uh we get to see the uh the appearance of another cobra baddie in the form of major blood and um looking pretty impressive uh doesn't necessarily keep that impressiveness throughout the issue but it is a uh it it was a it was an interesting turn of events and and obviously i know that this is this and the cobra commander miniseries uh are 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 tied into the energon universe unlike larry's a real american hero series so so the um but it is it it's it's interesting that uh some of the moves they're making with 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 some of the characters considering this this universe and this this uh is is still Something basically in the Please um in the infancy train stages i have no idea what the hell that is <laughs> it's not me it's tony <laughs> uh, well you're asking siri for shit so um yeah no i i just thought that the third issue uh was it it, it had some quiet moments at least as far as 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 things as conversations um in the pit but there's there's a lot going on outside the pit and which of course uh kind of ramp things up in the uh last third of 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 the issue but yeah it it was uh it's i i have no idea well i don't say i have no idea but i i i'm interested to see how the rest of this mini series because because we're we're past the halfway it's a five issue mini i think right or six but Mm -hmm. but we're we're so yeah, so so we've got we've got two more issues to to wrap up this story, and, and I think Duke's mission um, will will likely see a conclusion of sorts within this series. The, 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 there's something larger, of course, involved, but uh, as far as the the Duke story within this mini series, uh, I'm I'm liking it way more. I, I figured I'd I'd enjoy it, especially with with, with Tom's art. I, I knew I'd have a fun ride, but I didn't I didn't think. Uh, and it's not a slight t- towards towards Joe, but it, it's I, I I didn't think I was going to have this much fun with it, but with only the three issues we've gotten so far, um, I am I am happily pleasantly uh, surprised with, with with how much I'm I'm enjoying Duke. But yeah, it's 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 a hell of an issue, and 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 it's not like uh, there's not a ton of color play here. There's a lot of blues, a lot of oranges, a lot of uh, uh, some some uh yeah basically oranges and and blues for the most part so it, it's not like Jordy was uh going to town and, and making everything all all bright and um 
and shiny and and colorful but uh and, and a lot of it has to do with the lighting and and obviously it, it it's designed this way but yeah i'm i'm, I'm flipping through it now while, while talking about it i was uh i didn't really pick up on the um on just the the certain cues that uh that jordy used in, in this issue um but no it was it was great I, I really enjoyed the third issue a lot what about you guys it's a really interesting approach to this stuff like as as a neophyte uh, I, I I expected it to be business as usual, and this all of the Energon Joe stuff is definitely not that. Um, I, I thought it was very surprising that they're not taking any prisoners. The the mm. characters will be killed. Yeah, well, and, and it was surprising to me because the, the like the char- I don't you know if you haven't read it, it just came out Wednesday. So, so but the character that was killed was what I thought was one of the upper echelon characters at least in in terms of of uh v- you know visual presence like this character has been around a lot from what i've seen and then bam you know just like see ya you 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 had your moment in the spotlight now you're you're gone but uh the one of the neat things was i like the way they reinforce duke's um ability without actually showing that ability in a lot of cases like i think it was rock and roll that said uh yeah we brought him in but he was wounded if he wasn't wounded i don't think we would have been able to bring him in like that's mm-hmm. and that and rock and roll is a big dude you know so i thought that was a neat and very subtle way of, of well maybe not so subtle but of just like showing duke's potency without actually you know it, going through the motion i mean we've seen it in the in the prior two issues but it was a neat way of of maybe alerting the reader to the fact that these guys are going to turn you, you know it's going to happen they're they're going it, to it's one of those getting the band together type things that yeah. J- jason loves so much but it's it's a really smart approach and uh yeah and i think the baroness um was very true to the character that i yeah. i know her mm-hmm. to be uh, but th- i'm sure that'll work itself out too i mean for right now it's a cliffhanger but there there's definitely going to be a wrinkle in it where uh, enemies are going to have to work together in order to stay alive, and I I think the, the series is great. I love the art in this, yeah. And I hate to follow it with a but. Mm. I think Mooneyham is doing the absolute best Joe art right now. There, there are panels in Real American Hero that I'm just like, you motherfucker, that is yeah, a, no, I agree with that. That is a sure. beautiful, and they're yeah. two completely different art styles, right? Yeah. Um, Duke is much cleaner and and more linear whereas Mooneyham just he just litters the page with marks and lines and it's just amazing both work very well um and both have their place but uh yeah I mean I was looking at just one uh panel in particular where uh Mindbender's all disgusting and he's got these sores and these groats on his face and it's like holy shit that is a beautifully rendered panel like in Serpenter Khan, I think is in the background. It's really neat, but yeah, but not to take away from Duke. This is awesome too, and it's 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 just as difficult to achieve the des- desired effect with minimal lines as it is to just vomit many marks on the page beautifully. Like they're they're both stylists in their own right. So yes, mm-hmm. I love them. Nice, definitely getting Let's my keep- money's work for this yes let's keep the image orama going oh i got one too so it's going to be a hell of an image orama nice omega rama uh so i read issues 24 through 30 of fire power by robert kirkman and chris somni um and matt wilson on colors um that would also take for those that don't know that is that means i finished the series the series ended with issue 30 um it's been done for a few months now, I guess. Maybe, yeah, more than a few months. Um, I just had been letting them stack up, and uh, and finally, was like, let me jump in and, and and see what's doing here, how this finishes. Um, oddly, I think I, I I realized as I read those issues that twenty four is the end of of an arc, so I I was I'd stopped reading with an issue left to go in the arc, and then twenty five, which was oversized, I think it's double sized. 
starts the the last and final arc uh, or the the newest and final arc um but yeah this this listen if you've if you've heard us talk about the story it's pretty straightforward you've got a um uh, you've got a, a, a guy named owen who was trained in the martial arts at a temple a mystical temple it's not unlike iron fist really um and he is he then goes and lives in the United States, has a family of, with, has a, marries a, a gringo wife, and they have two kids, and they're living a normal life. And he gets pulled back into this world of, of high adventure to help save the world um, from a, uh, you know, a, a, a dark evil that uh, is is manifest in the name of a character named Master Wu. And he also commands a gigantic, like, skyscraper-sized kaiju red uh, dragon and they have to try and stop them. And, and through it, you, you, you get to know him. He's got history with the people that he trained with there, but now he's got his wife and kids and they have a really great relationship. It's, it's very, it's, it's, it, they do a really nice job. Kirkman and does a nice job of, of, of giving you the sense that these, this is like, a, they feel like a very real couple that genuinely loves each other, but, but it's not just like, you know, just white, like sort of whitewashed, like, stereotypical kind of love that you often see in these kinds of stories. It feels very real. Um, and yeah, so the final arc is basically them. Uh, it's the good guys versus the bad guys. By this point, Owen is pretty well like the badass trained up. You think he takes down the big villain, but, but he doesn't. And he realizes that he, he controls this firepower, which is basically like shooting fire from his, from his hands. Um, and he realizes that even though he's in full control of it now, he, he alone, even despite being a full master of it, cannot take down the evil forces. So what does he need to do? Well, his only hope is to train all the others, his master, his wife, his kids in the ways of the firepower. And then, uh, and then they may or may not all learn how to utilize the power. And then they may all or may not team up to take down the big bats, but it's just wonderful. I mean, Somni is perfect for this book. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting that we're talking about a Tom Riley book and then we bring, go right to a Somni book. Cause I think Riley is very much, uh, a, a disciple of Somni and, uh, has a, has a very similar visual, uh, visual alphabet. Um, but it's just a lot of fun, man. It's just big, giant cosmic Kung Fu. Um, so it's, it's a pr- pretty easy, it's a linear decision as whether you'd like this book. If you like Chris Omni art and you like Kung Fu, you'll love this book. If those things don't don't turn you on, then this is a book you could easily skip. I haven't read any of it, but it's a beautiful looking book. Duh. It, I know that's that's not ridiculous to say, but I think it visually it's it's a stunner. But I just I just haven't haven't read any of it. It's nice to know now that it's all finished like that. You could just get the whole thing at this point. That's yeah. that, charming about that. I love that that you could just scoop everything. Yeah, and it was it was, it was a smart start because the, you had the uh, the prelude, which was a trade, and then they went right into yep. to the main ongoing with the issues and uh, and and thirty's a decent chunk. I mean, it's 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 uh, you know it's not it's it's a couple issues shorter than than the losers. It, it's not as long as uh, the hundred bullets, but it's. Um, the, for the story that they're telling, and and I, I still have I, I have the the last arc and change to read. I was I was waiting for them all to to come in, and then me I wanted to just sit down and enjoy it. But um, I I love the entire setup of it, and and it's yeah it obviously Somni was the sole selling point for me, but but the fact that that Kirkman wrote a story featuring characters that. Uh, that I was interested in and wanted to see their, their progress and the relationship grow and, and, and the family come together. Um, it, it's, it's really, really well done. And, and now that, uh, now that it is over and once I do sit down with it, maybe it'll, uh, appear on, uh, on my Kloskers again. Nice. Yeah. And it, you know, it is actually more than 30 issues if you think about it. Because, like you said, the the prelude OGN is its own thing. So it, it's you know it's, it's probably if you if you think that's a probably like a four or five issue mini, then it's yeah, yeah it's yeah. so. But uh, but they're officially thirty issues plus that prelude OGN. And I know that they they put it they put out trades of it, of course. But there's I know I have the first hardcover, which is the prelude uh, OGN and issues one through twelve, and then 
sure shortly we'll get the uh, volume two hardcover, which is uh, 13 through 30. Neat. Yep. What's exciting now, too, is that Chris Somney's just out there. Who knows what yeah, he's doing? Because jo- Jonah's done. So, yeah, what's yeah. he up to? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it it'll be too long until we see more work from him. Yeah, maybe he's, yeah. maybe he's going to come back to Marvel. Who knows? There you go. Uh, yet another image book. One that oh? in, yes, one that in my estimation is one of the best ongoings out there. Bar none. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. It's written by W. Maxwell Prince with art by Martin Morazzo, color art by Chris O'Halloran, and somebody called Good Old Neon does the letters. It's Ice Cream Man number 38. Uh, this is a strange issue in a long string of strange issues. <laughs> strange issue, like the others haven't been. Yeah, this one's called Escape from Garyland. And there is a complex housing 438 Garys. And they all look exactly alike. They have, uh, each Gary is assigned a DGP which is a designated Gary purpose. The uh, narrator of this story is Gary 38 and his DGP is That's to, my dog, Gary 38. Yeah. His DGP is to rake leaves. He does the same thing each and every day. He rakes leaves, puts them in bags, and then he is rewarded by, by uh, lunch and dinner and lunch and dinner is the same thing. Every day for all the Garys, they eat nothing but vanilla ice cream. If they do something particularly well, they get an extra scoop. <laughs> but Gary 38, he's wondering like, okay, I, here's what I, I I rake leaves. That's my, my job and I do it really well and it's one of the top tier jobs. So I'm, I'm lucky to have this DGP, but I, there's, I don't see any trees. Like, where do these leaves come from? Every day I wake up, I come out, and there's leaves in the same spot. And I rake them up, and I do my thing. I go to bed. I get my 10 hours of sleep. I come back the next day, and there's more leaves. And I rake them. He goes, well, it's best just not to think about it. This is my job. Uh, another Gary, 59, his DGP is to reinforce cracks in a retaining wall. That's what he does. Gary 38's best friend is Gary 14. His DGP is to push a cart from one place to another. And the cart has cans of paint that drip onto the ground. Rainbow colored, each, many, many multicolored paint. And he just pushes this cart and leaves a trail of color. And, and that's his, his task, right? So one day, Gary 59 goes off the deep end in the cafeteria. And he's like, he says the C word. And, and the C word is a PGV. It's a prohibited Gary vocabulary. You cannot say the C word. The C word is clones. And mm. Gary 59 is like, we're all just clones. We're, we're all iterations of the same thing. There's more to, to life than this. We have a soul. And Gary 59 is taken away to a spa for treatment. And, and the incident kind of has ripples because Gary 38 starts to lose sleep. He's, he's, he's thinking about things like the trees. Where do the leaves come from? And, and why do I have to do it every day? And Gary 14 is looking a bit off and he's acting kind of weird and he's, 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 you know, uncommunicative. Uh, yeah, that word. So, uh, long story, real short, Gary, um, 14 comes to 38's room in the dead of night and he's covered in paint and he's like, shh, 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 shh. And, and he, so, okay. he gives Gary 38 a letter, which was written by Gary 59, who, pushed a block while he was fixing the cracks in the retaining wall. He pushed a block a little bit too hard and the block fell through the wall and he saw the outside world. Mm. And the letter kind of changes everything in that Gary's 
or in this case, Gary 38, starts to really question the meaning of existence and wants to know what exists beyond the wall. And he finds out. And I'm not going to say because you should read it. And I've said this before. Ice Cream Man is just a study in creative short story writing. And short story writing, single issues, uh, particularly single issue comics, are very difficult to write. Because you can run off at the mouth narratively and continue it next issue. Whereas if you're writing a self-contained story, you don't have that luxury. So you have to entice the reader, entertain the reader, hopefully enrapture the reader in a limited amount of pages. And it's not easy to do. And Maxwell Prince does it each and every issue. There may not be a conclusion to what they write. The story may end a bit open-ended or leave you uh, asking the same questions as the, the, the characters within the narrative. And that's by design. Um, cause in life there aren't too many answers for many of mm -hmm. the, many of the important questions. And I just think this book is phenomenal. It, it, it on, on every level, the art, Marazzo's art is, is just amazing. Very clean, um, intensely detailed line work, um, but gives the negative space, um, its own and, and allows his line work to exist in, in environments, which I love. And, O'Halloran colors uh, beautifully. It's not overly complex. It doesn't out, out. It's not computer color, as we've seen from like guys like Alex Sinclair, which who tend to go a little bit overboard with the abilities of Photoshop. And um, uh, O'Halloran's not like that. Very tasteful, very complimentary color to the line work. I just think this book is it's a winner. It gives me it gives, every every. It doesn't come out as often as it should. But when it does come out, it gives me food for thought. And he, he just mesmerized. Well, the whole creative team just mesmerizes me. It's one of those books I can read and think, I'm going to close that back cover. And I'm not going to be the same person I was when I went in. Because, you know, art changes you. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those books that definitely has an effect. The uh, it, it's Some of the stories could be similar but I, some of the stories could probably this particular issue this the, the, the story you just got done talking about sounded um sounded like it could have been a rick and morty episode and there are some issues that some of the ideas could be twisted to in in, in a similar way but but the clones with 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 the ice cream scoops with with the meals it just i i could see this playing out um, in other, with other I with, with other properties, but this uh, I I yeah I I need to catch up because I've I read the the first deluxe after we did our book of the month and then um, and I have to catch up with with the second volume. But yeah, I'm I it, it's it's another one where it, it's not necessarily a series that I would have tried really without any. I wouldn't have tried it if I wasn't nudged to whether whether it was from someone else or because it was a book of the month. But um, it it sticks with you. Like once once you do read a few issues, it it, it it's for me anyway. It's it's I I kind of it it calls again. It I I need to kind of get back to it to see what else is going on. Yeah, and there are like Pulp Fiction, there are characters that go away for an extended period. And then just reappear within the narrative. Or you'll see characters from one narrative in the background of another. Yeah. Narr like, I love that. It's just, it just, it, it, it makes the world so big and believable that there are things happening concurrently, some of which we experience now, some of which we'll experience later. But it's just like, it makes you feel like you're part of this huge ice cream man ecosystem breathable planet universe thing and i just love it i think it's a great book uh it's very different than anything obviously on the stand so it, it, it's it's not a marvel or a dc book it, it's even weird for an indie book and that's saying something 
So uh, go read Ice Cream Man because it is freaking great. It is definitely cut from a way different cloth than more normal books or your average book. Yeah. It seems like this W. Maxwell Prince is thinking of like a completely f- fresh concept every month. Is that? That's the problem. Yeah. I mean, it's not a problem as, as, as someone who uh, loves it. But I mean, creatively, as a writer, how do you do that? Crazy. Does he have other books going on? Is he just doing this one thing? No, he does something else. Well, he just did that Art Brute that was but in that the was can. Done. It was in the yeah. can for a while. Oh. Yeah, and then they, they chopped it into single issues. But no, he does another book. Um, I don't know the name. I, I, yeah, uh, and, and, and I think it, it, it's been running for a good stretch. I just don't know what it is. Uh, I should, obviously, but I don't. Yeah, this it's- is... Wow, that he come that he comes up with concepts like this. Like God bless, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm thinking a lot of it is is uh, well, I'm assuming, which I'm probably assuming wrong, but I'm guessing he employs the Burroughs cut up technique for a lot of stuff. Like just random factors influence what he writes, and he just uh, arranges them in a creative way. I, I don't want to downplay it, but I'm sure he challenges himself in in odd ways to construct these things whether it's you know random word generators or you know there are many ways to to uh approach approach creative writing from not your standard it was a dark and stormy night you know like okay not that there's anything wrong with that but i like it when a, a, a writer dips their their toe into the universe and allows the universe to push the story a little bit like randomness that that is basically what that is it's just i mean it's one thing to have like a set of characters and a scenario and then go like all right from month to month they're going to have different adventures this is a whole other thing to be like just whatever happens you know like right every issue will be a completely different scenario character setting you know like uh, oh, like rules, world, it's crazy. One Goodness. month, one month you're in the belly of a whale. The next month you got like militant gophers, and then you're in a compound uh, filled with clones. Like it's just crazy. Yeah, it's it's insane, and that's why I love it. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee, if you give this to somebody that's attuned to linear storytelling, where everything has to be predicated on something else like they're they're going to hate this they're, it's just not going to click hmm. what if and where do you other guys stand on this because i know you did it as a book of a month that- yeah, I, I didn't connect with it but but i mean i recognize it's a very high quality book it just didn't come no. about it no. david you're on board yeah i know i'm not um i'll I'll finish the the second deluxe edition, and then I'll probably um, check out an issue here or there. Uh, but it's not it's not a series that I'm I'm not I'm not waiting for the next issue like Vince's. But I do I do enjoy the concept. I it, it, whether it's you want to think it's something like um, like out of Twilight Zone or any sort of anthology series. Um, I'm I'm all for that, and and the whole thing between Ice Cream Man and and the Man in Black is it, it it just that that added something totally unexpected, and and uh, I I so there's a lot there that I want to get back to, um, so but yeah I, I I like the series, I like the idea, I like the concept. Um, I may not be there every month, but when I do read it, I um I, I'm I'm really liking what I'm reading. So I feel like as a creator, I would be afraid doing a, a full new concept, you know, like with like a, there's a continuity inside of it, right? But it, but they just, every issue is a completely different thing. I feel like you sort of give readers the opportunity to dip whenever they want, right? Yeah, yeah they can, yeah. And even in this one, you, you have to wonder, is is the fact, does the fact that the clones only are given vanilla ice cream? Like, does that play into the big? Mm-hmm. Does does he have some influence over this situation? Like, well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, it's whatever. The reader has a lot of control over the uh, meanings of things within the story, and it's designed that way. 
Like, I can assume that Ice Cream Man is, is manipulating the situation somewhat, but is he? Like, there's no, there's no hard answers to it. And it's great. Love it. You can't know everything. Mm-hmm. You try. Is he, when, when they get their ice cream, is, is he delivering it? Do they go out to the truck and, and he gives oh, them no, the ice cream? Oh, no, they don't go. No, they don't go. They don't go anywhere. They stay within the compound. And and the ice the ice cream's just delivered in little bowls. You don't oh, okay. you don't see where it comes from. They 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 just have it, and that's a lot of the, the the. I think one of the concepts of of this story is things exist just because. Like you don't their their jobs they're doing. Why are they doing them? Well, because they're, they're meaningless tasks. They have no bearing on anything other than the task itself it doesn't affect anything uh why would you spread paint over, over on the ground like what is that doing and where does it go from day to day like you would think that if you're dropping paint on the ground it would it would stay there overnight but it's not it's gone the next day it's, it's crazy surreal very very strange and unsettling stuff yeah yep so there you go. What else we got? Any more image? Oh, well, we're always welcome more image. I read this uh, book called Local Man, number nine. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, number nine right. pretty good. It's kind of it trash. Right. <laughs> Things are coming to a head. I'm, uh... Yeah, I'm not, uh... As 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 expected, uh, not really loving uh, not really loving Ingo all that much. I'm trying to interject, but Baxter is really doing some crazy shit over here in his pen. Mm. Going crazy. That's okay. Yeah. Got some water play in this. Madman flashing around. No, he's just sort of like trying to make his bed a little more comfortable for himself. I get that. He might be setting up for a real good hump as well. I oh, think so okay. aren't we all? As yeah, I say, I am too. I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, did you guys read Uncanny Valley? Can we talk about it? I mean, if you want to talk about Local Man number nine, I'm happy to talk about that too because we got Local Man Bad Girls coming out very soon. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> see on March the 4th. Uh, but yeah, me and Dave Wachter, a uh, friend of the show made this book on Kenny Valley. I can't wait to talk about it. Have you read it? Do we know what's happening? Do you hate it? Is this a time stopper situation where you're just being nice to me? Oh, snap. Oh, no. See, all right. So for me, I, 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 I greatly appreciate you sending us the preview. Um, the, 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 the finished pages are absolutely amazing. Uh, but once I got to some of the, rougher, less finished pages. pages. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I, I, I kind of want to wait until this is in my hand. So I didn't, I didn't read it fully. I have flipped through it. And like oh, I said, yeah. it's yeah. gorgeous, but I haven't, I haven't read the first issue. All right. Well, listen, this is, this seems very commercial and, and shitty of me, but I have to tell people what it is. Because yes. All this thing. So I'm going to talk about it as if it's a book that I just read that I want to tell you guys about. I don't know if this has ever happened on the show before, but I read this book, Uncanny Valley. Oh, uh, word. From Boom Studios. Uh, it's You can't read it yet, but it will be in stores in one month from now on, on uh, April 10th. So I guess a little over a month from now. It's called Uncanny Valley. Uh, art is by Dave Wachter, who you know from the current Punisher run. Uh, and it's written by uh, the shithead that writes Stray Dogs. <laughs> Facts. And uh, it's basically uh, like a, a Percy Jackson meets Roger Rabbit. Like it's a coming of age story where the the kid who's coming of age is a kid, a, a normal age child, like a 12 year old boy. And uh, he starts to develop these strange powers and he starts to have these strange things happen to him. And uh, he doesn't know why. And he asks his mom about it because it's just him and his mom. He, he has he comes from a, a single parent home and he, he doesn't understand why he doesn't have like a, a, a broader family connection or a, like a connection to the place that he's from. And he finds out that it's all because 
his grandfather is a cartoon character. He meets his grandpa, and his grandpa is a cartoon character, and he has to end up going on this adventure with him. He has to go on the run with his grandpa, who's a cartoon character. Uh, who's Yosemite Sam? He's he's basically a Yosemite Sam. Yeah, his name's Pecos Pete. <laughs> Uh, and you don't, <laughs> you'll find that out in the future, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a cartoon cowboy and they have to go on the run together. And, uh, then, and while they're on the run, they'll, they'll discover that like running alongside our world is this whole other world that's made up of cartoons. And it's, you know, the, in the beginning there was dinosaurs and those dinosaurs were like, uh, Windsor McKay, Gertie, the dinosaurs. And then when man came along, they were like Flintstones. And then, you know, from there we went to, you know, uh, more savage, like He-Man type characters. And then from there we went to like, you know, revolutionary Ben and me type characters. So we have, so like, there's like a whole history of the world that runs through cartoons and it runs parallel to our world. And this kid, Oliver will sort of like discover all of this through this adventure. while he finds out, why he's developing these new powers and why uh, the cartoon world thinks he's so important and wants him. And uh, so, yeah, it's like a, it's like a coming of age adventure, Percy Jackson, but instead of Greek gods, it's cartoons. Um, and it's me and Dave Wachter. We talked about it a little bit in the comics pro uh, stuff last episode, but I wanted to tell you guys about it this episode because uh because I'm very excited about it. It's, I think it's Dave Wachter's uh, greatest work to date. I think it's very beautiful. Now, is this one of those deals where you could conceivably take this for a really long run, but you're going to sort of do it, make sure you have it arc by arc just in case? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, in the in the solicitations, it says one of six. And it's sort of this uh, back and forth between me and the – like, if I do a book of image – I can make it until I can make it a hundred issues long and just lose money on it at, at issue a hundred. Um, but where somebody is paying me to make it and paying Dave to make it and paying for everything, they're a little more circumspect about the numbers. So they have it set at six issues, but yeah, we definitely want to stretch it out and go for much longer with this. There's a whole big story to be told here and sort of following along the, uh, the James Tynan playbook, we were like, well, let's not try and crush it all into the first six. Let's just let it breathe, tell the story like it's going to be. And if the readership is there, we'll keep it going. And if not, you know, we might run into a cliffhanger. You know, like there might be uh, an issue six that has to hang on for a little bit until everybody can can get their wits about them and come back around and finish it up. But I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel like we're going to go until the end. This story has has real big things that happen as it goes like it, get, it gets pretty epic um but it starts off just this small story of this boy and his mom and his grandpa and it grows and it grows and it grows every issue you meet new cartoons and you sort of gain new powers and um i don't know i think it's exciting i think people are going to dig it so you said that you've had this story in your back pocket for 10 years yeah, it's one of the earliest things. It's pretty stray dogs. It's pretty. It's pretty almost everything that I've made. Um, but it, it's a complicated uh, story to make. Like it has to have somebody who's uh, accomplished enough to be able to do the real world stuff and the cartoon world stuff at the same time, or it would have to have like two also accomplished teams. Somebody that could do the full real world stuff and then somebody draw on top of it the cartoon stuff and work in tandem. So. It just sort of worked out perfectly that Dave and I sort of had been in touch and friends this whole time. And Dave had sort of gotten like leveled up to this place where he can, you know, the Punisher stuff that he's doing and the Planet of the Apes stuff that he did before that and the X-Men. He sort of like reached a real level with superhero comics. And I sort of like invited him back to create your own stuff and was like, do you want to do like, like like real real world stuff and then draw cartoons on top of it and he was super game for it and super excited about it and and it's been cool to see him do I, like i said i think it's his best stuff you know yeah i i agree to a point like i think dave blew the doors off teenage mutant ninja turtles sure and i love that run uh, do i think this is better in some respects yes it is could but use more turtles for sure it could use more turtles yeah yeah 
but I think it's it's great. Uh, the the both of his his achievements on on these things are, are are amazing. But yeah, I like I really like the look of this. It's it's a dangerous. Uh, I think it's a brave undertaking because <laughs> it definitely feels uh, like I'm like I'm walking on uh, like that Indiana Jones where he just steps out over the crevice and there might not <laughs> be any ground underneath him when he lands, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause I feel like I'm always making these comics where it's like nobody asked for it. Like nobody was like, give us a scary Disney movie or, give you know. Get, you know, nobody's saying like give me a Roger Rabbit with heart or give me like a coming of age Robert Roger Rabbit story. People would really love it if you know you just made like genre stuff all the time. But for some reason, I have it in my head that I have to make these these bizarre. I mean, they feel mainstream to me. Like it feels like a mainstream story, but they are for comic books a little bit left to center, a little yeah. bit strange. Well, I think that's a badge of honor you should wear proudly. I mean, I'm not as weird as the shit you like. You like very <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, here, here's a pull quote for you. Let's hit it. Cool world done right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool world without the titties. You don't know where it's going to go. So from far. Yeah. 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 Have some titties flopping out in the future of this. <laughs> it would be surprising, even to me, as the author of titties came, came flopping out in here. Yeah. And well, hopefully they don't flop. Spring would be good. Titty springing oh, okay. out. We don't want the, we don't need the <laughs> floppy ones. Yeah, I'll take either way. Me too. No, well, I yeah, yeah, who, who, yeah. I'm not proud. <laughs> but but it does look and I'm you know the color is just awesome. That's the thing. So I was telling you guys last episode last week when we got together, I said that I was at Comics Pro and uh, and C. Sapolsky was there for Marvel and I I ran into him. And I said, "Hey, I'm working with you with your guy Dave. He's doing all kinds of Marvel stuff." And uh, I said, "Who?" I said, "Well, he was like, he was like, yeah, I love his work." And I said, "Well, look, you got look at what he's doing in this." I gave him a copy of the book. I said, "You got to let him color himself. Look how crazy it looks when he's allowed to just go off." Um, and he and he's like, "I've never even seen him color himself." So, yeah, the, the stuff he's doing here, I think it's better than you know. It's it's like ten years since. Um, Guns of Shadow Valley, which and then he did that Godzilla one shot that he colored, and mm-hmm. that was cool. Uh, but I think this is the best, like coloring wise, I think it's the best shit he's ever done. You know, like he's really figured something out here in the in the time because he's like I I did the same thing where I'm working on licensed stuff. You know, he's working on Marvel stuff. I was working on you know like ponies and Rick and Morty and stuff like this, Star Wars. And the whole time you're doing it, you're thinking, like, if I had, if this was mine, if I own this, if I had all the time in the world to work on this or whatever, I would do this, this, and this. And so uh, it's cool to see him sort of, like, unleashed. He does have, I mean, not all the time in the world, but it's his, he owns it, and he's he can do whatever he wants, and this is what he's doing. It's, it's really fun to see. Well, it's not comics by committee. He's in much more control over this than previous stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean his yeah. Punisher stuff is really good, but this is Dave. Like this is, mm-hmm. and even in the Punisher, you can see him sort of like like stretching up against the bounds of what they wanted to do. Like you can tell when when he does those um, when he like draws in the title cards every issue that it's just him going like I want this to be like this, you know? Because clearly Marvel has letterers that they would have do title cards. But Dave's like, this is. I want this to have a big splashy intro, and I want it to look like this. Um, so he's always sort of like, like pushing up against. It. I tell, I can feel like he wants to do more and more and more. And in this story, like we get to places where he's going to get to really go crazy. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I'm. I'm dreading the time where this this book takes off to the point where Dave's going to be like, "Excuse me, who are you again?" Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it'll happen. I don't think that'll happen. Do nah, you? I'd like to see it just blow up. Yeah. Not for your sake, but for Dave's. No, of course. Yeah, yes. for, Dave. for Dave and Jenny. Oh, yeah. Good people. They, I, I want their garden to, to succeed. I want to be able to plant like only the most pristine, choicest <laughs> seeds in their garden. Oh, only the, the, most, the most ballerous seeds. Yep. From that vault that they say they have somewhere where there are examples of every seed, every plant that's ever existed, even the ones that are uh, no longer with us. That'd be cool to have a garden of extinct plant life. 
which would which wouldn't be that. which wouldn't be extinct anymore but you know what i mean you could have then all the knowledge of good and evil i already do <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we have no more comics what's up with you people you got? What was oh that? yeah all right yes with it's that time all right everybody hey once again thank you for listening to this we love you for doing so and because we love you we're going to let you know a little secret CheapGraphicNovels.com can get you the stuff you want at the price you want to pay. Really inexpensive trades, OGNs, Omnibu. I just placed my pre-order for the Godzilla Omnibus. Manga, all that stuff at a fraction of what you're going to pay elsewhere. CheapGraphicNovels.com. Take a look at our Patreon page. Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. Because we're serving up some good stuff. You get a bonus episode for one tier which is the book of the month or something completely different. Chances are book of the month for right now. And the next tier, you get the book of the month and access to the Slack. So you get your page of the day. You get your covers of the day. You get fanzine downloads. You get um, other stuff in addition to camaraderie with a whole mess of beautiful people who love comics and other stuff. Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. In your travels... What do I want you to read? Well, well, I want you to read Comics Review. Yes, mm-hmm. I haven't talked about this book in, in, in a while. So uh, I still love it. it. This issue's 453, 454. Again, the double issue thing just totally blows my mind, but whatever. Um, February 2024. All good stuff. In, in addition to, you know, you got your Ricochet, you got Garth and Mandrake and Alley Oop and Crazy Cat. All of uh, Steve Canyon, Gasoline Alley, uh, did I say Flash Gordon? I should have. Casey Ruggles, Drago. I mean, this stuff is the cream of the crop for, for newspaper strips. But one of them, as usual, uh, stands head and shoulders above the pack, and it's Roy Crane's Rip Kirby. And it is uh, alone reason to buy this issue, because this is a story called Finding Irene. Which was, uh, which ran from November twenty second, nineteen seventy one, to February twelfth, nineteen seventy two. It's essentially a locked room mystery, where this Delbert P. Ritchie comes to Troubleshooters Incorporated, and he's got a problem. He's like, uh, I put my wife on a plane, which was a straight shot, no connecting flight to Miami. Her sister was supposed to pick her up at the airport. And my wife never got off the plane. And Rip's like, wait a minute. You saw her get on the plane? He's like, yeah, yeah, I I did. And Delbert has a shadowy past. It's his second marriage. His original marriage, he married for money because he didn't have any. And his wife was an alcoholic and took a canoe out one night and drowned. So he was brought in. And eventually got off. Like he was exonerated of any any wrongdoing. But the fact that his second wife has now gone missing, he doesn't want any police involvement at all in the case. Which you know stands to reason, right? So what Rip Kirby actually has to do is find Irene. Where is she? Is she, is she dead? Did she did she get on the plane? Did she not get off the plane? Long story short, she ran away with her hairdresser, Maurice. And because she hates her husband and she married him for money. So conceptual continuity. Um, and he, Rip and uh, his wife, Christine, have to capture this woman on film in order to prove her existence and, you know, cue the multiple uh, unfortunate situations. It's, it's, it's all tongue in cheek and very fun. And while I'm reading it, not once, but multiple times, a character will say, Come on, Irene. And I was, like, uh, I was like, thank you, thank you. Irene likes to gamble, loves to gamble, and is never seen without her prized and very distinctive emerald ring. So I won't say how it plays out, but it all comes out good in the end. It's a simple, lighthearted story, but in the hands of Roy Crane, holy crap, it is just amazing. Um, Miss Telly Jones a uh, an employee of Troubleshooters Incorporated appears in this uh, strip, and she is just a little doll baby. She's she's uh, very enjoyable to look at. So 
if you like great comic strip art, uh, why aren't you picking up Comics Review? I don't know, but you should be. Mm. Yep. It's true. Big ups to Rick Norwood, the editor. He's been doing this a long, long time. It's and uh, with very little fanfare. Like, I'm guessing that Comics Review doesn't <laughs> sell a, a whole mess of comics but or copies, but it's it's worth every penny. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Ah, uh, in your travels, um, the uh, following the events in the fifth issue of Wonder Woman by Tom King and Daniel Sapari and Tommy Omori and Clayton Cowles, um, the fifth issue was Diana and uh, letting her sisters know that she has to take on this battle by herself and um, in order to do that and to make sure that Yara and Cassie and Donna stayed away, she had to best them in, in a combat of their choosing. Extremely entertaining issue. Um, I've always thought gamer girls are hot and they definitely are in this issue. And in the sixth issue, we have what uh, Steel and company, what they were putting in motion. And that is, uh, that is Angleman and Dr. Psycho uh, working together to um, basically kind of wear down Diana's mental defenses while bolstering uh, the rogues that were attacking her um, like Giganta and Cersei and uh, the, the Silver Swan and basically just destroying the Washington Monument and and uh, the mall and the the battle is intense. Diana, she obviously can can hold her own, but it 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 was an amazing it was an amazing sight, uh, and and she kind of was doing well uh, until Grail, Darkseid's daughter, appears, and um, and they have quite the knock down, drag out, slobber knocker. Uh, but um, there is a there's a moment where it looks like the tide shifts a little bit, uh, possibly in Diana's favor. Uh, unfortunately, though, we're going to have to wait because while this is the sixth issue, this continues in the eighth issue, and according to this little blurb, uh, they take a break next issue for Wonder Woman, Superman, and the Space Ball, whatever that means. But I do know, based on, I don't want to say I know, but based on the cover of, I think, maybe eight or nine, or an upcoming issue, it looks like um, Diana may actually end up getting captured and and this could all go according to her plan so i mean tom is just writing a hell of a story the art is absolutely fantastic of course but but uh but yeah i haven't been this excited to read to i I can't wait for the next issue of a wonder woman comic since since george brought the character back post-crisis uh it's just been it's been a hell of a ride these few issues and then you know i the 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 fight Diana has to uh, has to take on and 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 just the 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 battle she she's waging against these these people who are uh, entitled and and are bullies and who think they're superior to others it's uh, I'm I'm at times it can be a bit of a difficult road for me because. Of, these characters and 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 who they're supposed to uh, represent and and I of of things that I have 
vehemently dislike bullies is up there high on the list so um it's it's uncomfortable at times but knowing uh knowing tom and 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 how he kind of spins his yarns um um, I'm looking forward to 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 the resolution because I'll be able to exhale. But but yeah, it's it's been a hell of a run so far in your travels. Wonder Woman by Tom King, Daniel Safari, uh, Tomoe Mori, and Clayton Cowles. Yes. I mean, where is Jason? What's going on? Maybe went to the bathroom. Do you want me to do my my? Yeah, travel? yeah. Do yours. In your travels, uh, I'm looking at this book that I picked up this week from the fine folks, Frank Forte and the gang at Asylum Press, uh, written and illustrated by Steve Manion. <laughs> <laughs> on the bomb number three of four. I don't know if this just came out or if it came out weeks ago or years ago. I don't know what the fuck is ever going on with Fearless Dawn. It just seems to always come out, and I always pick it up. I probably have bought the same books over and over again, but it's always uh, really beautiful. It's sort of like Frank Frazetta times Gasoline Alley times uh, Eric Powell times a little bit of Bruce Tim. It's this great story about this gal, Fearless Dawn, and uh, she's always mixing it up, fighting, you know, like Nazi mutants. And uh, and it's in black and white, and the inks are just super beautiful. But I truly don't know which comes first or what comes after. I never know if I'm reading, like, early work or late work. I wish there was, like, a Fearless Dawn compendium or, like, a hardcover series or something it's only in issues, right? Like, there's no collections of this thing. I'm uh, not entirely sure. I know yeah. they kickstart sometimes, but I feel like when they kickstart, it's like they're they're small timing. Like they're always just going, like, just let us get the next issue or the next miniseries. I would love for them to kickstart like a like a hardcover volume of this thing or, or like a series of hardcovers because uh, I want to read it from the first. You know, I want to read it all in order from the first to last. I feel like I even have it. But I don't know what goes when. There's the anime one. There's several different Fearless Dawn miniseries. One time she's hanging out with Hellboy. But the cool thing about it is, really, you can just pick up any issue of this thing, and it's fun uh, from front to back. But if you're like a completist like me, you want to know how it all fits together, what, what comes first. Because I know this Fearless Dawn, the bomb miniseries, is also, like the first Fearless Dawn miniseries is also called The Bomb. But this came out in December 2023. So is this a reprint of that? I fucking can't tell. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Because you're right, The Bomb is the first one. But this is a new four-issue miniseries. Good news is like five bucks. So for $20, maybe I'll buy it two times over the course of several months. Right, yeah. Who knows? It's great. I'm happy to help these people out if they want my money. Uh it's, very, it's it's beautiful to look at, and if I dig through my boxes and I happen to have this already, that's fine. It's great. Of all the care of the creators that are known for one creation, like Mignola, Hellboy, uh, yeah. Powell, um, the Goon, I think Mannion is by far the best of any of them. You think Mannion's better than Mike Mignola? Uh, in terms of illustration, yes, yes. Ah, incredible. <laughs> I do like – no, I like Mignola. I think he's great. Oh, yeah, Mignola's fantastic. But they're – I mean, yeah, great. Play with shadows. It's great. Holy shit. Steve is just – like you said, he's an amalgamation of so many – like Wrightson. I see so much Wrightson in, in yes. his work. But I like he's a more serious. grotesque, detailed approach to horror comics like Mannion. Where I, I'm not discounting Mignola. He's a freaking powerhouse. But yeah. for for to my eyes, I think Mannion is is at the pinnacle of all those guys. I think Mannion blows Powell away. Like Powell's yeah. good, but Mannion's just a freaking virtuoso. Like he could do anything. I wonder what the deal is. Why there's not a uh, you know what is it just infrastructure? Because like Asylum Press, it's not like there's other Asylum Press hardcovers or trades out there. I feel like they're all just issues. So is it a situation? No, Asylum does some trades like there's a bunch of 
uh, horror anthologies that they put out in trade, like whatever, Vampire Something. Because I buy them whenever they're zombie thing. Like whenever they come out, I buy them. Well, then fucking, why isn't there a Fear I don't, of Stone? I don't know. Sense. I don't know. I, I really don't know. It, it's, <sighs> it's, it's very strange. Uh, I keep a, I keep an eye on the 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 Asylum Press solicits in in previews, and a lot of the times it's just it's rehashing of old stuff that they've they've published, and it's very strange. Um, it goes to the same comic shop as me because I, I I feel like I've seen them and they're selling books to them before. Next time I see them, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. We'll yeah, maybe them. we should get Steve on. I mean, we know him. I'm sure he'd he'd love to come on, but um, I'm thinking a, a huge. Uh, swatch of of steve's income comes from commissions Mm -hmm. yeah because he's always on the grind that's because there's not like he should have there should be trades out there that sell all the time there should be like mailbox money for this guy just regular you know when people you know like mike vignola still sells conqueror worms you know like he still sells uh, early hellboys all the time this should this should be available for people to 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 find out about yeah I think there are a number of factors involved, um, some of which are the pitfalls of human existence. So mm. I, 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 I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know exactly. But there are other things at play here. And one of them is maybe Steve went with the wrong publisher. Ooh. Right? Wow. Because, I mean, Asylum doesn't seem their, – their, their previews listings are not robust by any means. And I think I think that Mannion would be better served with a, maybe like a dark horse, yeah, or, or, sure. or or you know maybe a few ticks up higher than that. I I don't know. It's just a it's it's a really strange uh, situation that it, here's a creator that deserves more eyes on his stuff because he's he's in a class all by himself. For a lot of stuff, and and it's just you, you, trickle. It's it's yeah. Here's another four. Here's a here's a one shot. Here's another swim like another one shot. Here's a, another mini series where you can't just go out and say, "Give me some Steve Mannion." I want a whole bunch of it at once. You can't. It's just weird. Well, I do feel like he's built such a library that he could show up anywhere, and and they could you know crank out a couple cool hardcovers you know for a start. Yeah, know? yeah. Or even Asylum Press could crank out a couple of cool hardcovers for a start. I just. I just wish that there was a like an, an entry point into Fearless Dawn because, you know, I've been probably buying this book for 10 years, but I never know where I'm at. Same. You know, like I pick it up, I read it, and I'm just like, who knows what this is? You know, yep. it's great. Yeah, it's an erratic, really, uh, there's no roadmap for Fearless Dawn, and there should be. Yeah. Yeah. And, but also, who knows if that's Steve Mannion, you know, like maybe he just. That, like I said, yeah, there, there, there are things that, there are factors that, Aside from the creation of comics that are at play in this thing, yeah, I love it. If you see Fearless Dawn in your comic store, pick it up. You know, shoot money to this uh, to this person so he can make more of this stuff because it is beautiful and it's uh, it's super charming, uh, and it does feel it feels like a combination of all those things, and but with its own personal, you know, he's got his own take. He's coming from his own place with this, but yeah. yeah. And it's better than Mignola. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Is Jason here yet? What's the deal? Is Jason okay? I don't know. Someone I call Jason's fans. I don't, I don't see any messages. So, I mean, uh, on that note, we're just going to bring it on home then. You fall off the Peloton? Who knows? Who knows? So, hey, everybody. Thank you for listening. Get yourself to a comic book shop. Read. Enjoy. Talk. Talk it up. We need more eyes and, and, and ears uh, open to the, the wonders of the comic world. Um, in the meantime, you know how all this works, right? We are going to say good night. <laughs> Forgot the intro of this song was so long. Klaus Nomi. <laughs> David. Good night. If you haven't uh, experienced Klaus Nomi, go, do yourself a favor. Go on the YouTubes and just do a search for Klaus Nomi. 
and you know me. me. Call me Klaus. Yes, me. You know. I love him. I'm on board. Love that guy. I think he can hit a high C. I bet he could. Yeah, I think that was the like he's got a, an operatic voice. He's like a like a Brandon Norwood of his day. Nice, on both counts. All right, everybody, tell them you love them. Let's get out of here. Tell Jason that you love him wherever he may be. Maybe he fell asleep. Two shows is a lot for this guy. Well, he's frail. What if he's sleeping right there at his desk? Who knows? Jason. Nah, it's, it's not happening. Jason. Tell them you love them. We love you so much. That's it for that one. <laughs>